Welcome everyone. Tonight, we're back again, live from the healing rooms of the Santa Maria Valley, but in our homes again. But hey, it's better than nothing. So we're glad we're here tonight. We're going to connect with you in some worship and, uh, and just a word from the Lord tonight. And so we just want you guys just to relax, receive from God and be blessed tonight. Yeah, happy Martin Luther King Day. I've been seeing a lot of quotes of his on social media today, and I just wanted to start out reading one that I thought was really good. He said, darkness cannot drive out darkness. Only light can do that. Hate cannot drive out hate. Only love can do that. And that's so appropriate for today. Uh, what an awesome man as we honor him today on this Martin Luther King Day. Good quote. Amen. And so now we're going to go into worship. Ellen McKinley is going to be leading us in a couple songs, and then we'll be back with the word.
Because your promise still stands Great is your faithfulness Your faithfulness And I'm still in your hands And this is my confidence You never fail me yet You're so faithful
Amen. So good. Amen. Thank you, Alan. And that's what we're after right now, isn't it? We're going after his glory. And we're li living in the time and in the season of the glory of God being manifested in his church and in us, uh, his, his sons and his daughters. And, uh, you know, I just wanted to start out tonight with a prophecy that Paul Cain gave just shortly before he passed away a little over a year ago. And I believe he was seeing, he was prophesying, I believe the day we're about, we're living in and the things we're about to experience. And this was his last uh, prophetic word. And it says, uh, he said, and, it, and the title of this is, is uh, a new day is coming. How many know a new day is coming? I believe it's already here. But it, his, his prophecy goes, it, he says, it seems good to me that you are going to see some things that will leave some of you without words for days. There is a resurgence of the fear of the Lord coming, and it will fall suddenly, unexpectedly, and unannounced. A new day is coming. It's not an encore. This will be like no other. This will be a hallmark of a huge wave of the spirit that will sweep around the world. It will be about holiness and purity of heart. And it is a waste of time telling folk to get ready. It will just come suddenly. A revival with the hallmark of tears, but also profound intimacy with the person of the Holy Spirit. Man, I'll tell you something. I believe that this word is for now, for 2021. And, uh, and especially the part, you know, uh, a new profound intimacy with the person uh, of the Holy Spirit. And how many know that the Holy Spirit is not just some it floating around in, in all, outer space, you know, but it, it, it's a person. He's a person and he has a personality and he's the third person of the Godhead, the Trinity. You know, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. And it tells us in, in uh, 2 Corinthians 13, 14, it says, may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And I'll tell you something, this verse has meant so much to me in the last few years, especially because it's talking about the triune God and the role each, each God, part of the God, Godhead plays. And, uh, you know, it's interesting, uh, you know, Lori, that, you know, it, you know, Jesus Christ is the source of grace. It says, may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ. And that's an amazing thing. You know, in, in John 1, 17, it says, for the law was given through Moses. Grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. And so, you know, grace is, uh, is freely giving. Uh, it's like an unmerited favor of the love of God. And that's an amazing thing. You know, and grace is kindness, it's forgiveness, it's mercy. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, and then it says in Romans 3, verses 23 and 24 about this grace that Jesus carries, which is for you and I. Uh, it says, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God and, uh, and are justified freely by his grace. To the redemption that came by Jesus Christ. And so, you know, that's grace. That's, that's, an, that's amazing grace that, you know, we've all fall, fallen short of the glory of God that's about to come upon us. We don't deserve his glory, you know, and uh, we have all sinned, but it's his grace that has justified us freely and, uh, and brought us into the redemption that came through Jesus Christ and what he paid for us uh, with his life. And, you know, Jesus is quoted in, in, uh, in 2 Corinthians 12, 8. Jesus said, my grace is sufficient for you. That's a powerful statement. Think about that. 
Jesus' grace is sufficient for you. It's sufficient for me, but for every single person. It doesn't matter where you've been or what you've gone through or the sin that you were involved with in the past. His grace is sufficient for you. That's a powerful, powerful statement because he goes on to say, because uh, my power is made perfect in weakness. And so you might say, well, I, I just feel so weak. I don't have anything to give, but I want to tell you something. His grace is sufficient for you. And that's a powerful, powerful thing. And you know, even the weaker we are, the more powerful he becomes. Is that, is that, is that amazing? Yeah, that's really good. And we all need it now, especially after this year we've all come through and are still going through things just to know his grace is there for us. It's strong. It's real. And we can just rest. Uh, like he said, it's, undeserved but he gives it to us it is yeah. good yeah and I, and I really feel like the lord is, is is really extending a lot of grace to us right now yes. we've gone through a lot in 2020 you know all the things that happened with the covid and all the unrest you know that's happened through the nation our nation and all the things that we've that we've experienced and we're kind of still experiencing but i want to tell you something but jesus's grace is sufficient for you you don't have to go into fear. You don't have to go into the, all those things and anxiety. His, 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 you know, his grace is sufficient for you. That's an amazing statement from the Lord. And I receive that grace, don't you? Yeah. I mean, it's, it is so good. But there's going to be an abundance of grace, I believe, released this year. But also, so we, so we see that Jesus is the source of grace. Mm. You know, again, he gave his life for us. And then when we need grace, we go to the source. We go to Jesus Christ, our Lord, our Savior, the one who bring, brought us redemption. And, we, and if we need grace, we go to him, and he, and he gives it to us freely. He knows what we need, but he knows when we say, Lord, we need extra grace right now. I'm going to tell you something. His grace is sufficient uh, for all of us. And so the second thing, it says, and, and the love of God. And, you know, God the Father uh, is the source of love. Think about it. Uh, and, and it's, it's the, the uh, benevolent affection of God for his, all his creation, for his sons and his daughters, all those he's called into his kingdom. And the Bible describes God's love as perfect and unfailing. And, you know, a lot of us haven't, haven't really experienced perfect love or, you know, we've, we've experienced broken love. And we, we've experienced a love that has failed us. You know, and uh, but it says the word of God says that his love is so perfect. I mean, it, it's 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 perfection and uh, and it cannot fail us at all. And so we, we when we need that love, we need to get into that love. The father's pure love. We come to the source. We come to the father and we just we just receive from his love. He loves to give it to us. You know, it says the scripture tells us he loves us so much that he gave his son for us. You know, and and so that that's just an amazing thing. Yeah, God is love. And so love can't fail because God is love. God can't fail. So it's always right to go to love. Like it's always right to love because love never fails. God is love. God can't fail. Love can't fail. Yeah. There's something about this love anointing, you guys, and I believe that love is the greatest weapon that God the Father has given us. Because like Lori said, he is love. Mm -hmm. And you know, it's not a time to get angry with, with people that, that don't agree with us or, or carry a different opinion than us. You know, um, we, can't, we don't go after them with anger. We go after them with God's love, his perfect love. Uh, it's about love and grace, isn't it? Mm -hmm. And it's so important, you know, to understand those things. But we need, we can't, we can't walk in grace if you don't first receive Jesus' grace. And we can't, we can't walk in the love of the Father unless we first receive that love. And then when we receive that love, that love comes upon us, we have something to give others. We can't just manufacture it and try, and try to give a false love. We've got to encounter love through God the Father, perfect love, unfailing love, get filled full of his love, soak in his love, and then, and then give that love away to anyone that we see. And the Bible says, love your enemies. Did you know that? I mean, even those who do wrong to you, the Lord says, you, you need to love them. Why is that? Because I'll, I'll tell you, love is a weapon. And, and love is what sent Jesus. And love is what, uh, why Jesus died for us, you guys. And so, so 
Jesus loved his enemies, and he said, don't hold this against them. When he was nailing, when he was being nailed on the cross, forgive them for they know not what they're doing. And so we need, we need to come to God, that perfect, unfailing love, receive from him, be filled full of that love, and let that love anointing come on us. And then, and then we, our, our thoughts would be different. We, we, when we look at people, uh, we would look at them in a, in a different light. Well, we look at them uh, in, in the light of God's love. And again, I, I really feel really strong. This next movement that's coming, it's, it's going to be a move of grace, and it's going to be a, a move of great, great love. And again, I feel like that God is raising up an army in this, in this end times. I believe we're in the end times. And I believe that, uh, again, this army is going to look like Jesus, who represents the Father perfectly. It's going to be an army of love. And, uh, and that's what's going to bring in the harvest. You know, the Bible says love is patient. Love is kind. It does not envy. It does not boast. It is not proud. It is not rude. It is, it is not self-seeking. It is not easily angered. It keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. And it goes on to say, love never fails. And so we need to get this, you guys. We really need to get the Father in us, his heart, the Father's heart. Get that love inside of us, you know, so we can make a difference in the world. It's the love that's going to turn the world around. And then that scripture you started with, um, that says, uh, may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God, we need God's, I need, we all need God's grace to walk in God's love. Because just that list in 1 Corinthians 13, love is patient and kind and all the things, some of those things, it doesn't keep a record of wrong. Um, you can't do that apart from the grace of God. I, I read that list sometimes and I go, oh my gosh, this is hard. <laughs> because it is hard. But with the grace, if you have the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God, again, it takes God's grace to even walk in his love. Oh, really so does. true. Yeah. And, you know, by the way, that's the test. This is how we know if we truly are walking in love. We need to take the love test every day. Say, Lord, or every week anyway, and say, Lord, am I being kind? <laughs> am I patient? Am I, am I envious of anyone? You know, am I boasting? Am I proud? You know, we need to take that love test. And, uh, and then, and then we, can, we know where we stand with the Lord. But I'll tell you, look, the more we're with the Father, you guys, the Father is, loves his children. He's calling us to him right now. He has so much to say to us. You know, and uh, not only does the Lord Jesus Christ want to pour out his grace upon us, and why does he want to do that? So we can pour out grace on others. But the Father wants us to be with him. And as we're with him, we just, we can't help. We're like sponges. We just, we just take in that love. And then when we go out, anywhere we go, it just kind of oozes out of us the love of God the Father. So we could even just pray. I like to take the scripture and pray it back to God. So we could say, love is patient. Um, Jesus, give me your grace to be patient because I want to look like you and walk like you. I want to be patient and kind. Jesus, give me your grace to be kind because there's a lot of ways to not be kind. <laughs> And so we need his grace to walk in this love. Uh, what is love? We read it, patience, kindness, goodness, all these things, it's love and we need his grace. And it's really good that his grace is available. If you read this list of what love is and then sometimes I look at it, like I said earlier, and I look at all the places where I'm not measuring up, but you can ask God for his grace and it's so abundant, so abundant. So that's good news. Yeah, and then the Father loves to give you his love. He loves to lavish it on you, but he wants to give it to you so you can possess it, that you can love others through him, mm -hmm. uh, which is so, so important. You know, and it also says in scripture that there are three uh, uh, virtues uh, that, are gonna, uh, that are eternal, and it's uh, faith, hope, and love. And it says that love is the greatest of these. They're eternal virtues, but love is the top of, of the whole list. So it's a powerful thing. So when you, how, do, how do we get the love? We go to the source. We go to God the Father, set at his feet, and say, Father, pour your love on me. I need your love. Mm -hmm. I need you so much right now. But it goes on to say, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit mm -hmm. be with you all. Now, that is so important right now. Like Paul Cain was saying, you know, it's going to be, it's this next movement. It's going to be a, a profound intimacy with the person of the Holy Spirit. He said that this will be marked by a, by a huge wave 
It'll be a hallmark, hallmark of a, a huge wave of the Spirit that will sweep around the world. And people, we need the Holy Spirit right now, don't we? We need it. We need Him, and we need His power. And so, the Holy Spirit is the source of power of, of this divine supernatural power. Jesus said, you'll receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. And so we need a fresh baptism of the Holy Spirit right now, don't we? We need an end feeling like never before so we can be this end time army that God is raising up. You know, and, uh, and so again, as we fellowship with the Holy Spirit, we receive power. Uh, but we also receive the gifts of the Holy Spirit. And he also, the Holy Spirit, will, will produce fruit in our lives, fruit that we need to have. But as we fellowship with him, it, we begin to produce fruit. We begin to uh, receive gifts because he trusts us. And the thing is, what he trusts us with, he sees how we're doing with grace and love. And if he can trust us with his grace, God, with Jesus' grace, God, the Father's perfect love, then he says, you're ready for gifts. You're ready for power. You're ready, you're ready right now for me to release that supernatural power on you. And uh, we really need the power of God right now. If we're going to see the Bible, it's not going to come just through faith people. It's going to come through the Holy Spirit. Now, you know, when we get saved, most, most of us, we say a prayer and we receive Christ by faith. And, and we recognize, we understand that he takes away all of our sins. He washes them all away. This is by faith. And we receive God's, God's forgiveness and God's, and God's love uh, as, as we're, we're washed in the blood of, of Jesus. We were brought into the Father as, as spotless. And he accepts us as spotless, cleansed, perfectly clean uh, sons and daughters. Not because of anything we've done, but what Jesus Christ has done. And we have to accept this by faith. Now, a lot of us, when we became a Christian, a lot of us didn't, didn't feel anything, but we did it by faith, and we believed the word of God. And, uh, and some of us get emotional when we think about God's love. It brings a tear to our eyes, and sometimes we feel like a closeness of God with us. But it's a faith walk. It's a faith walk, isn't it? You know, it tells us, it tells us in uh, Romans 1.17, it says, the righteous will live by faith. 2 Corinthians 5, 7, it says, we live by faith, not by sight. And in Galatians 2, 20, it says, the life I live in the body, I live by faith in the Son of God. And in Ephesians 2, 8, it says, it's by grace that you have been saved through faith. And so faith, you know, we have to believe God is. You know, that's the only way we can come to God, because we haven't seen God. We haven't seen Jesus. But we chose to believe by faith. But I want to tell you something. When it comes to the Holy Spirit, it's completely different. The Holy Spirit is the part of the Godhead that you will experience. Jesus said you'll receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. And the power of God comes upon us. And see, some of us aren't sure if we've ever been baptized by the Holy Spirit. Or if we're filled with the Holy Spirit. I want to tell you something you will know. Because it's you, you experience his power. You cannot receive the Holy Spirit and, and not receive his power. I'm talking about the baptism of the Holy Spirit, which launches you into your call, which launches you into the gifts of the Holy Spirit, <clears throat> launches you into a prophesying for preaching, for word of knowledge, word of wisdom, who, who releases dreams and visions. You know, all this comes through the power of the Holy Spirit, and it's something that we experience. And again, it says, it says, and um, Jesus said <clears throat> it to us in Acts chapter one, he said, um, he said, do not leave Jerusalem, but wait for the gift my father promised, which you heard me speak about for John baptized with water. But in a few days, you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. And, uh, and it says, uh, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. And so when the Holy Spirit comes upon us in this power, it's, it's power to be witnesses. And you look at Jesus when at his baptism, when the Holy Spirit came upon him, he was launched into his public ministry. And uh, his message, you can hear it, but you can also witness it and experience it. 
because Jesus healed the sick. He raised the dead. He cast out demons. He cleansed the lepers. And you know, because it's a powerful, powerful gospel, gospel, but it can only be powerful if we have the Holy Spirit like Jesus did. And Jesus told us, you'll receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. And then he sent us out. He said, as you go, preach this message. The kingdom of heaven is, on, is upon you and is at, is at hand. And he said, then he said, heal the sick, raise the dead, cast out demons demons, cleanse the lepers, freely receive, freely give, and people that can only happen as we experience the Holy Spirit of God coming upon us. And so Jesus prophesied to the early church, and it says in, in uh, Acts 2 verse 1, it says, when the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place, and then suddenly a sound like a blowing, a violent wind came, out, came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. They were experiencing the Holy Spirit. And they saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. And they were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. And it goes on to say they spilled out into the streets and they began to speak in different languages from the people that were visiting uh, for Pentecost that were from other nations that were hearing, hearing them prophesying uh, in their own language. And some thought they were drunk. And Peter had to stand up and he said, hey, these men are not drunk as you suppose. It's only nine in the morning. No, this is what was prophesied by the prophet Joel. In the last days, God says, I'll pour out my spirit on all, on all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your young, young men will see vision. Your old men will dream dreams. And even on my maidservants, both men and women, I'll pour out my spirit in those days and they will prophesy. Come on. And this is what the Holy Spirit does. The Holy Spirit is the Godhead, that, the part of the Godhead that you will experience. Jesus is in heaven at the right side of the Father. They're both in heaven right now. But the Bible tells us that Jesus sent the Holy Spirit to earth right now. He's with us now, and you can experience him right now. And we need a fresh baptism of fire right now on the church. And, and God is about to set the church ablaze once again. Just like the early church, there's a fire that's coming to the, church, to the church, and it's a baptism of fire that was spoken about by Jesus, where it says, John baptized uh, you with, with the water, but you, in a few days you'll be baptized with the Holy Spirit and fire. And there's a baptism of fire that's coming upon the church, you guys. I believe it's now. I believe it's going to be in 2021. Oh, man, I, I better watch out. I'll start preaching. <laughs> Amen. We need it. <laughs> The baptism. Yeah. So, you know, it, it says there in Acts chapter 2 that, that when the Holy Spirit came, it says they saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each one of them. And people, let's pray for the fire to come to rest that will separate and come on each of us and rest upon us and not leave us. We need the fire of the Holy Spirit right now. And we need the fire of God. We need, we, we need to be the church ablaze. We need the refiner's fire that purifies. We need that consumer's uh, consuming fire that we're all in. We're 100% in. You know, we need the revelation fire, you know, that releases a, a prophecy, word of knowledge, dreams, word of wisdom. We need that illuminating fire, uh, which brings that supernatural understanding. We need the protection fire that puts a hedge around us, our families, and our home. We need the consecration fire, that whole, you know, that wholehearted worship before God that opens the heavens and allows this kingdom to come. You know, and we need that love and passion fire that releases his compassion for healing. And so, you know, fire is, it's a wonder. It reveals the glory of God. It releases healing and it bears witness to God's presence. Mm -hmm. But you know, also you think about what fire does. It softens our hearts. It melts us. You know, it gives light. It illuminates. You know, it tests our worth. You know, it, 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 it ignites our hearts with passion for Jesus. And it gives witness, again, to God's presence. And so we really need that right now. We need the fire. We, we welcome you, Holy Spirit, in 2021. We need you more than ever. We desire you. And we're, we're kindling. We're, 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 we're building inside our spirits and inside our heart uh, this, this thing, this altar of God, uh, that he will that we'll, we'll, we'll prepare it. And we ask him to bring the fire that we will burn for, for Jesus, burn for, for the kingdom of God. 
And that's what it's going to take, the church ablaze, the church on fire, on fire in, this, in this very hour. And that comes through the fellowship of the Holy Spirit. And it says, and it says with all you all, it's for all of us, to, be, to have fellowship with the Holy Spirit, which, which will produce the things I'm talking about right now in our lives. And that's what's going to make a difference. That's what's going to bring the kingdom of God. That's what's going to release the revival. It's not an automatic, people. We need the Holy Spirit, fellowship with the person of the Holy Spirit. So you need power, you go to the source. You need the fire of God, you go to the source. You go to the Holy Spirit. And you can pray directly to the Holy Spirit with all sincerity. Say, come and ignite my heart. I'm building you an altar. Please bring your fire. Set me ablaze for you. I must burn for Jesus in this hour. Set me ablaze. So how do you fellowship with the Holy Spirit like in a practical way? What do you do? I just like to say, like today, again, I took my prayer walk. You know, I walk five miles a day and I'm praying to the Holy Spirit. I'm just kind of like praying while like I'm telling you. I say, Lord, I'm building an altar in my heart right now. I need you, Holy Spirit. I can't do this without you. I'm confessing my weakness, you know, and I said, without God's help, without your help, Holy Spirit, I can do nothing. But with your help in my weakness, you'll perfect your strength. And uh, I talked to him like that. And I just said, I long for another encounter with you. And I've had encounters with Jesus and you know, I mean, with, with the Holy Spirit, and it's lasted for years, you know, it really has. And back in, back in 1994 in Toronto, I, I got impacted by the power, the raw power of the Holy Spirit. It lasted for years, you, you guys, and, and it launched us into what we're doing today. It launched us into ministry. Uh, and there was so much power, and the Lord sent us around the world. We prophesied. We laid hands on the sick and saw people get healed. We, we saw signs and wonders and miracles through this encounter. And I want to tell you something. We need it again. And I tell the Holy Spirit, I need you again. I need to encounter you again. And I'm inviting him. I say, please come, Holy Spirit. Please come. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I talk to him like that. I need you. i got to have you, you know, and I desire you and I love you. And I tell him also, like I was telling him today as I was walking, I said, you know, have I not been faithful in the past when you came upon me with power? Did I not, did I not prophesy? Did I not lay hands on the sick? Did I not go around the world and, 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 uh, and talk about your kingdom and, and, and give away what you gave me? And I say, if you do it again, I'll, I will do it again. I will do it again. I can't do it on my own. I can't make it up. But if you give me something, if you give me your power again, uh, I can do all things, and I'll be faithful to give it away. I just talk honestly with, with, the, with the Holy Spirit. You know, you can't fake out God. You just got to be hungry. And that's what he's looking for, hungry people, those who have a hungry heart or desiring to make a difference, you know, and to fulfill uh, our destinies. We cannot do it, people, without the Holy Spirit's power. And right now is the time. We got to go after it wholeheartedly. We got to go after the person of the Holy Spirit, that fellowship of the Holy Spirit is key. Mm -hmm. Amen. 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 You have anything else you'd like to add or say? Um, well, I just think that's good. Like, especially this past year, church attendance has been different than it's been our whole Christian life because we've been quarantined a lot of this past year. And so I think a lot of us found out, do we have a relationship with the Lord? more or a relationship with the church if you know what i mean and we need we need to have the relationship with the holy spirit if it was just us and him how would our life would it be different um so yeah just that relationship with the father the son and the holy spirit we we need that more than we need anything we it is so true mm -hmm. it, it is so so true the triune god we need it all man yeah. we got to have grace we got to have love and we got to have the power we got to represent the triune God, you know, and then we'll see the heavens open. Then we'll see the king, his kingdom come. Mm -hmm. uh, and, you know, it seems like, you know, so much of the church has been distracted because of everything that's been going on in 2020. And, and I, it's, it's understandable, yeah. you know, uh, but we need to keep our eyes fixed on Jesus right now, you guys. <clears throat> and we need to spend time with, 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 with the God of grace, the God of love, and the God of power. We need to spend that time. We need to be open before him. We need to build that altar, those altars in our hearts, you guys, and just prepare it. We got to rebuild it, and he brings the fire. And so we got to do that right now. We got to be building. We'll build an altar, you guys. Build it. Build an altar in your heart. Build it in your soul, your spirit, this altar. And when the altar is built, the fire will come. 
if you're hungry, if you're seeking God. So I just want to pray for you <clears throat> right now. Lord, we just pray right now for those who are listening, those watching tonight. Lord, I pray that you would give them great grace, yes. the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, I pray your grace come upon them. Some are going through some really hard things tonight. And Lord, I'm asking for grace. And Lord, I know your grace is sufficient for them. And so, Lord, I pray for the abundance of grace to come upon people tonight. And Father, we're praying for love. Pour out your love in a very real and tangible way on people tonight. Lord, those that, that need your love right now, I ask that you'd come upon them and baptize them in your love. Let the love anointing come upon them, Lord, as they spend time with perfect, unfailing love. And Lord, and then they can give that love away. They can represent you like Jesus represented you. And Holy Spirit, we're asking, Lord, for that power. As Jesus said, we will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon us. And Lord, I just say, Holy Spirit, even right now, I'm asking that you would fall upon people who are watching tonight. Let the fire come upon them right now. The fire of your presence, the fire of your spirit come upon them right now and ignite them. And Lord, I just pray that all of us, Lord, will begin to daily, every day, before we go to bed, every morning we wake up, we were thinking about building an altar to you, Lord, so you'll bring that fire. Let us be that church on fire. Lord, we pray this and we ask this in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. And we want to give you thanks. Lord, thank you, Lord, for allowing us to be alive in a time such as this. Lord, we were called by you. We're chosen by you for, for an hour, this very hour. This is our watch. And Lord, we thank you that you never leave us nor forsake us. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. Right, well, God bless you. And uh, we'll see you next week. Good night.